What's up? So I built an app with multiple different UI libraries just to understand why. Let's talk about that. Okay, so what I did was I built a Twitter front end um, where you can kind of just have a sidebar, you have a tweet composer, you have a timeline and stuff with different web UI library building tools that is web user interface uh, tools to see how they feel, to consider the trade-offs between them, but really to think about the options because we currently live in a day and age where there's a lot of options from, from React to Vue to Svelte to Angular to Quick um, to Preact to Lit HTML to I think there's something called Liquid, so it's solid and liquid and there's all these things. And you know, how do we work with them? Do we work with them? Some are easier to write, but like more expensive in terms of like downloading JavaScript and executing it. Some are maybe harder to write, but they're faster. Like there's so many different trade-offs. I wanted to write the same app multiple ways and then, you know, look at some trade-offs. Uh, and I also wanted to explore how I could do that, how I could write a component or components, a set of components once, and then transfer them between UI library tools in a comfortable way, okay? Um, and that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. But before we do that, let me show you the app quickly. It's called Tager. It's like Twitter, but with my name, Tager. Um, and this is what it looks like. So we go here. Um, and we got Tager, this is a local dev server running. And I, I'm gonna click Login, and it's going to open up Twitter Auth, ask me if I want to authorize my own app, sure. Um, and it's gonna take me back, I'm all set, let's go. And now we go home, and there we go, I have my, my app. As you can tell, CSS is hard, I see this now. Um, it's also open source, by the way, so if you wanna open a pull request and help me fix this, it's fine. Um, and now I can, I can type a tweet, what's um, currently recording a video about about UI libraries. I can send that and it actually works. So that's done. Um, in fact, if I reload, I might see my new timeline or not. <laughs> and there's some stuff here. So this is just intended to look a bit like the Twitter Twitter, Twitter web UI. And I think in, in some ways it kind of does, like if we switch tabs, you know? Um, so I built this thing in in React, in, in no, I was gonna say view in React, in SolidJS and in Quick. Um, I, we won't spend much time talking about Quick because I did a video about Quick recently. I put a link up there. Highly recommend. Quick is awesome. Um, but I built this using different UI libraries that have different semantics for defining UIs. And I wanted a nice way to do this because imagine a world, right, where we write like our UI components um, in one like generic language and then we can transpile that to a library of choice. So we write like a button component. Um, in, in some generic language. And then we can say, okay, take this button component and now compile it for Vue, now for Svelte, now for React, now for Swift UI, we can go outside of the web tools. Now for Swift UI on the iOS apps, now and just like compile your components differently. Um, I thought that'd be pretty cool. And that's when I found Mitosis. Mitosis is a tool that does exactly that. It will take as input a generic definition of a component you express uh, as JSX or as Svelte syntax, whatever you want. Um, and then you it will transpile that to a library of your choice. Let's look at it. So I have a little demo here of that. Um, and if we go here to Mitosis Fiddle, this is this is the Mitosis REPL. So on the left you have, um, this is Mitosis JSX, where you're, look, you're importing use state from Builder.io Mitosis. You have a use state component. You have what looks like React. And this is the compiled output for view. So this is a full on view component and it's interactive. So I can say view tiffle to see you, right? And as you can see, it's interactive. And I can choose, do I compile to view two or view three, TypeScript or JavaScript? But it's not just view, I can compile to React. Um, I can compile to Quick, it's pretty nuts. I can compile to Angular, to Svelte, to Swift, look at that. Um, to solid, to stencil, it just goes on and on. And so writing mitosis, you can compile to a lot of things. And that is incredible. It's incredible because um, you, can, you can really write once, build multiple different places. And that is pretty freaking awesome. Um, it is super beta though, and there's quite a few limitations. So don't get too excited. I personally, I wanna to talk to you about how I built this using mitosis in a bit. Suffice it to say, it's not very ready, but it's ready enough for me to build it and make this video. Um, and so what I wanna do with the rest of the time is actually just walk through some code. We'll start by looking at the flow I did, because how I implemented this app was I built it first in Quick. 
Why Quick? Because Quick is also made and maintained by Builder.io. So I expected like nice parity with, with mitosis. So I built the entire app in Quick. Um, and then factored, I built them all in one page. Actually, every component in one page is a massive file. Um, and then I split out components. And then I ran each component through mitosis and then compile it to um, you know, React and Solid and then use Next.js and so on. So let's walk through that flow and then understand the steps re required to use mitosis and, and achieve a similar thing, okay? Um, so to do that, let's go here. Um, and actually, let's look at the code for my Quick app first. So if we go to the Quick app and open the editor, what do we see? Um, this is what it looks like. So if we zoom out, we have a source and we have an entry point, which is routes um, index. Okay, so this is our entry point. Um, we have some state for authentication and stuff. Um, and this is how it works. We check if the user is authenticated. If the user is not authenticated, we show a login page. If the user is authenticated, we show the whole UI passing down some, some props. Um, notice these are components. If we go to the whole UI component, there's some tailwind in here with a sidebar, the composer, the timeline, and the right sidebar. And that's kind of what we see here. Um, am I not logged in anymore? Okay, I can just log in again. Um, let's do that, awesome. So yeah, so, so sidebar, composer, timeline, right sidebar. Sidebar, composer, timeline, right sidebar. And these are individual components and we load them and use them. Um, there is server-side rendering, of course, because the authentication um, travels over cookies travels over cookies. And so there is some server side rendering. That's why we used Quick City and we used Solid Start and we used Next.js. We used the frameworks for server side rendering. Um, but that's, that's the flow of the application. Then I broke it down into individual components. So if we go here, um, I took things and put them in components like whole UI and so on. Let's look at the components folder. So these are all of our components that we plan to reuse across UI libraries. So we have an avatar component. We have a button component with a bunch of Tailwind styles and CLSX or class names. We have Composer, we have Login Page, just a bunch of components. So what I did then is I took these components to Mitosis um, and from Mitosis generated them. Let's look at that workflow. So if we come here, let's now go to the terminal. Um, and what we're gonna do is go to Mitosis and we'll open Mitosis, the, the project. So this is the Mitosis project. And what we can see is I've literally, so what I did was I copied all these components out and put them in components in mitosis, okay? Um, and then generated output. Let's look at how we did that. So if I go back to the browser here and I go to Builder.io mitosis, um, this is the repo, it's open source, you can read it, it's awesome. Um, I tried to follow the instructions, spoiler alert, it is very, very beta. Uh, and, and well, let's just look at it together. So we come here, Quick start guide, npm install, builder.io mitosis CLI, builder.io mitosis. Um, that was done in the project here. So if we look at package JSON, I did builder.io mitosis and mitosis CLI, that's done. Um, add a mitosis.config.js with your source and your targets, um, done. Source is component slash, targets are these. Um, set up TypeScript, this, done as well, tsconfig.json, exactly one for one. Install ES lint rules, no real guidance about what, but also done. Um, and you know, now it's create a component and build. So now we should be here. And logically running this um, should, you know, give us what we want. It says done, awesome. And after it's done, you should now have an output directory with your compiled components. Do we have an output directory? Yeah, we don't. We don't, and, and this is this was my experience. So I was like, why? Where is my output directory? Like, what 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 do what do I do? So I, I went back to VS Code, um, and and played around. I went back to the terminal, and I said, okay, well, that's not. I guess build doesn't really work as expected. So let's mitosis. Um, what else can we do? I help. Okay, so now, um, npm exec. What? Okay, this doesn't really do anything. So we'll npx mitosis maybe, and then we'll help. Now, okay, so now we have something. And notice, usage is mitosis, not build, but compile. Welcome to beta software. Compile to your format with your options and the target files. Okay, so we can try that. So, so kind of like this, compile to React component. Okay, let's try that. Um, so let's, let's do this. So we'll do npx mitosis, compile, target, 
React. Um, any options? I think we're fine. And then we'll do components and let's just try the avatar. Okay, so it worked. This is React output. Um, and what we can do is just give it an out, out file, I guess. Out dear React. Okay, nice. Does it work? It does. Let's actually do everything. So we'll do star.tsx and we'll force it to overwrite. Um, excellent. So now we have a bunch of React components from our, um, from our mitosis components. One caveat here, um, I did have to change some of the quick components to be more mitosis friendly because mitosis has its own syntax. It was very minimal. It didn't take a lot of time, but I did have to go component by component and kind of swap out the quick stuff for the mitosis stuff. There's good documentation about this. It didn't take a long time, but just something for you to know. Uh, back to the back to the code. So now I have this compiled React code, um, and it's pretty. Again, hey, mitosis is beta. It's understandable. Okay, don't judge. Um, there's active work being done on it, and th there's no need to be disrespectful about anyone's work because it is a work in progress. I want to highlight ways it's broken um, that you can expect and that you can work around, like I did. I worked around them, and they worked, and I created my thing. You can too. Um, so this is not a criticism. This is just a watch out for this. It's probably going to be fixed soon, etc. So let's go back here. And what we can see is it imports React from React. And just this random observer thing. I don't really know. And yes, I did import this in my React app. And um, and I ended up getting, you know, cannot read undefined. What is observer? Like, it, this happened multiple times. And then I had to, in my React app, go through each component and, and basically do this. So I had to um, remove the observer wrap. Every component gets this. Like, even if they're not stateful, they just get that. This was intended to actually be for stateful components. So for like our composer is stateful because you type a tweet. Let's look at the composer. So this, the composer, is a stateful component. Um, but look at this. It imports MobX React Lite. And like, I don't mind that it does that, but it doesn't tell me I need to npm install that. That's another thing. I was like, oh, I'm using MobX now? OK. Um, but I npm installed. Everything was fine. And that's where the observer comes from, and some use local observable. So I guess that's what it does. I don't know why it doesn't just use React basic use state yet. It's beta, it's fine. And now the observer is imported. So that's kind of the intent. That is one thing that caught me off guard multiple times. Um, and another thing that caught me off guard, and that, that, that was just a React thing with this observer. But another thing that caught me off guard multiple times was when you have on-click properties, at the moment, mitosis doesn't pass like a call to the onclick function. It just passes a reference to the function. Um, and we can actually look at this in the in the playground. So if we go back here um, to mitosis fiddle, like on change is event and then set name something like this. But if we go to like the compile, let's go to the React component. Um, and if instead of this, right, if we just do like props dot on change on change, um, what we'll see is this is a reference to an onChange function that's supposed to be a function. But the compiled output is not calling the function. This would call the function. Or even if we do something like, like, like this here, now we get what we want, right? We're calling the function. But if we just pass a reference to a function to be called, um, it's, it's never going to call it. It's just going to do this. And that's, that's a bit of a foot gun that I noticed as well. Um, but all in all, it's beta, it's fine, and this, if anything, this video will help fix it if it's not already fixed. The team's doing great work, and I fully believe in and support them. Okay, um, let's let's move on. So that was some foot guns in there, um, but generally this looks pretty good so long as we fix this. Now let's try for um, solid. So we'll do the same thing, and instead of React, we'll do solid, and we'll say out dear here is solid as well. Um, and I think that's pretty cool to watch that. So now we have solid components just like that. But look, there's another import for solid style components. And it would be cool if it did that. It just has to tell you, you know, um, it's very, look, for any tool, software you create, I feel like if it's a developer tool, nobody's ever going to tell you there's too much output. At least I've never heard that. I like knowing things. Rule number one of human computer interaction I learned was, always keep the user informed of the state of the system. And if the state of my system is you're importing something without telling me, I'd like to know that. Um, anyway, uh, npm install, it's not such a big deal to, to get rid of that. Um, but besides that, everything kind of just worked out of the box with solid once I knew I had to install these dependencies. Um, on click, pro like if we go to button, what you'll see is again, on click passes a reference to my on click function. It doesn't pass this. 
I wish it did, it didn't, and this applies across all tools, but solid was pretty solid, actually. <laughs> um, and lastly, let's try for view and svelte. Um, view, and we'll do out there as well, is view. Okay, um, there's, yeah, I experienced this, Un unexpected closing tab, but let's pretend that doesn't exist. Let's do svelte. Um, it's beta, it's fine. Uh, and we'll do svelte here. Okay, Svelte looks cool. So if we go to Svelte, um, look at that. It's a full-on like Svelte component. Isn't that wild? So yeah, that's how I generated a bunch of components for different UI libraries. And and keep in mind now, these are just the components. These are the buttons, the UI, the sidebars, etc. We need to compose them together. So I did. That was actually not hard at all. Like with Next.js, I open Next.js. I here we can walk the code. Um, I did actually, it was so easy, I did next 12 and 13. So if I go here, um, this is the next code base. Um, all of this is open source, by the way, I'll put a link under the like button. Um, and these are actually my mitosis compiled React components. One other thing that's really, really a blocker for mitosis, I think at scale, um, is compiled mitosis output has no type information. So if you type your props, if you have like type prop something, you lose that once mitosis is through with you. Uh, just something to be aware of. But this is, so this is my Next.js components, avatar, button, all from mitosis. Very, very nice. I had to clean it up. I did remove that observer stuff, but it's there. Um, and now I just compose it together. So I had pages slash app where I imported Tailwind. Uh, and then I had index.tsx. It's literally the same thing I did in Quick, but in Next.js. I export get server-side props. I get a token if there's any from cookies. I get me, who am I from Twitter. I get the timeline. And I return all of that as props to the component. Then I just render the component. If I'm not authenticated, show the login page from mitosis. Um, if I am authenticated, show the whole UI, again, from mitosis. So it's just the fetching part that I needed to do, and then I just returned mitosis components. This was Prima. That is deployed, um, I think it's next.js. I think it's tager dash nextjs.tage.as if you want to play source code. I'll put all the links under the like button, just do that. Um, the next JS was pretty straightforward. Let's look at the solid. So if we go back to the computer, uh, let's go to Tager solid and walk the code. This was using solid start. It's like solids next JS. Um, and what we have here, let's take a look. So we close all same drill, um, components all came from, um, and notice there's solid style components. There's some imports missing, uh, but all of these just came from mitosis. I didn't even touch these. I did lose state information, but I knew what I was doing. Um, and then what did we do in the, in the beginning? We, in in root.tsx, um, I actually didn't touch this much. I just removed some stuff. In um, index, I same logic, right? Um, this is essentially get server-side props, but for solid. Create server data. Get the cookie if I'm not authenticated. Say I'm not authenticated. If I am, return me. Return the timeline and, and information. And then here, if I'm not authenticated, show the login page. If I am, show the whole UI. It's the same drill. It's this, it, It's been extremely convenient to have a set of components ready to go and then just do server-side like tying stuff together. It was very, very comfortable thanks to mitosis um, and this like generic approach. All right, so this looks good. Um, I did have some API routes across libraries as well, just to tweet and they're the same. Just talk to the Twitter API um, and for authentication as well. But again, this is copy paste essentially. Um, and that's that's it. It was very, very convenient uh, to do. I'm trying to look, there was also somewhere I import Tailwind. I think it's this root.css um, here. Yeah, okay, so that's where the Tailwind was. And that's it. That's how, that was the process of me building the same app in different UI libraries and frameworks um, using Mitosis. I think it's a great tool. It's very rough around the edges, but it's very much there. Now, you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, we have a running app that's identical um, and that uses very similar uh, tooling like Tailwind and so on. We should test them and get numbers and then make the framework wars worse. Should we? There's so many hot takes like comparing frameworks and libraries and, oh, React is better than Svelte and Quake is better than this and you're better than me. And I don't know if I want to add to that. Um, at the same time, we have come this far, so why not? You know, it's, it's a weird tense place. I think really the best framework or library for you is the one that works for you and your users. It may be a little bit slower, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe whatever. 
if your users like it, if you like it, if you're happy, if things are working, sure. Um, but since we're here, let's do it. In doing this, I've tried to deploy sites and I found out it's very hard. I don't know why, but deployments just aren't working. So in this video, I wanted to just like open four tabs with, with React and Next.js 12, Next 13, Solid and Quick, and you know, run through, thing, run through Lighthouse with them. Um, but to do that, I have to deploy these apps. Um, and that's been, I've lost three days in preparing this video, fighting with issues, deployment issues, that I didn't know existed and that have caused me a great deal of pain. And so here's what's going to happen. I'm not going to deploy certain things. And I'll show you why and how broken deployment is. So let's take a look. Um, go back here and let's, uh, you know, let's start by trying to deploy our quick one. So if we go to our quick app, this is the quick app. Um, quick has a Vercel adapter and I'm going to deploy to Vercel. So what I'll do is I will npx deploy and this should deploy. So Oh, okay, that, that's not what I want to do. I want to npm run deploy, I think. Yeah, so Vercel deploy. And this is using the quick adapter for Vercel. Uh, and it's going to do this. And that's beta. Quick, All of quick is beta. So I, I understand when things break. Um, it's very understandable and excusable. Um, let's, let's see this. So it's building. Um, the, the, the builder IO thing is building. I like it. Um, this doesn't take too long. Shouldn't anyway. Let's see. Okay, so npm run build failed, exited with one. Why? Let's look at the logs. And I really, as a developer, the logs have to speak to me. And then I come here and it makes a bunch of chunks and then it's like self is not defined. And I'm like, uh, I, I don't know what that means. It's in quick city plan. I'm trying to examine the stack trace and nothing here ties back to my code. And everything in quick city or the Vercel adapter is built, managed by some other team. I really don't know how to begin debugging this. And as a result, I'm not going to deploy this app. Um, what I can do though, thankfully, Quick has a local deployment, like it will optimize everything for production locally, and then you can just test that. Um, and we can do that, I guess. So uh, I, I already have it running locally. It's not gonna cost a lot. Um, the solid app did deploy as expected. Um, in fact, here, we can look at how that worked. So if, if we go to Tager Solid, I just run Vercel. I also could connect it to a GitHub repository. I don't really, um, I could do whatever. So I'm, I'm here, I just run Vercel to deploy to Vercel and it, and it works and I'm very, very happy about that. Um, I hope the build doesn't take too long. If it does, it does. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I want. In the meantime, um, we can look at the solid app and see how identical it is to the quick app. This is, this is running in solid and I might as well log in here. Okay, so now this is the solid app. Let's add this here. The quick app is running here. Am I logged into the quick app? I'm not, so I can also log into the quick app. Authorize, um, awesome, I'm all set. So now we have quick and solid running side by side. Fantastic. There's a developer toolbar here because it's the local version um, that Arc browser adds for me. That's pretty nice. So now, okay, we're done. See, it just worked. Wow, I love that. So solid is deployed, quick we're running locally. Let's deploy. Next.js. Now this next section, honestly, I was not ready for because I'd never experienced like Next.js and Vercel having trouble deploying my site ever until now. Um, and let's, let's, I, I have no words. So let's go here to the next 12 one and I will Vercel and I will just deploy to production. Again, I, I could use a GitHub repository. I actually do deploy by Git push, but in this case, I have nothing to commit. So I'm just doing a manual like Vercel deployment. Both of them have given me trouble as we'll see pretty soon. So it's building right now, if you want to take a look. Um, and it does that. And very soon, I'm going to be, you know, there we go. So look at this error. No serverless pages were built. Check your logs at here. Okay, so I'm going to open this. Look at my logs. And it says, no serverless pages were built. And Okay, what am I supposed to do with that? Well, okay, here's a link. Maybe maybe this link will, will give me some, some good information. So I come here, and why this occurred? When your application is not configured for serverless Next.js build output. npm install next save, now build, next build target. This is all Vercel, like this is very old. When was this written? 2020. Um, so I tried this, it didn't work. And then of course, I did what all developers do on the internet is I went to Stack Overflow unabashedly, I, I searched around. Um, and this has been here, this is so, if we go to Reddit, 
from four months ago, still this year, it's the same error, um, but there's really no solution. Someone just saying the message is pretty clear, which really it isn't. Um, there's another one, same, three months ago, no serverless pages were built, no answer. I have yet to find an answer to this, and I don't know what to do. I've, I've spent three days trying this out. I spoke to the Vercel team. I mean, it's underway, but I'm on a timeline to make these videos and I've been blocked and I just, I can't. So I'm not deploying this app. Um, I'm not, I can't even run it locally as it would be in production. I, as far as I know, I could do node end production and run it, but I don't know if it would give me the same like Vercel edge benefits and it may make things unfair. I don't know. And so I, I wouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, let's maybe try Netlify. I don't know. So let's go to Netlify. Uh, bring it all together. Let's log in and try to deploy our app here. I'll try to deploy the next JS 13 one. Um, how do I Where's add, add a new site? Here we go. And I will import an existing project from GitHub. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to get my next. I love this search. It's amazing. Um, it's maybe just next 13. Okay. I think I have a GitHub repo. Yes. Excellent. Tager next 13. Branch to deploy main, everything looks good. I mean, this is the default probably, and I will deploy the site. Um, again, it's a Next.js template, so I'm expecting it to know, you know, the, the command to build and do all the things. So it's building. Um, let's take a look. Netlify, I love this. Auto detect in Next.js and we'll use the Next.js runtime to build and deploy my site. I love that. I love it. So it's doing its thing. I have to say, shout out Netlify, your build logs look amazing. I don't know who designed this. Spot on. I absolutely love it. So we're installing things using Next.js runtime. Um, build command, creating it. Okay, look, it's working, but it's not. Plugin Netlify.js failed. It doesn't contain a production build. I don't know why. Um, yeah, so that's, that's another failure. I tried to deploy this app on Netlify but it failed again for a reason I don't I don't know because I don't know the reason because I don't know why there's no production build. This is hidden behind Netlify's systems. And um, I'm not using next export because I'm not doing a static site. So I don't I don't really know. I haven't chosen a custom disk deer. I don't know. This is uh, pretty inactionable for me. And there's probably, you know, if, if I was newer in the industry, I would feel like I'm the problem now because two things have failed and I'm the common denominator. My imposter syndrome would be going through the roof, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> this is not me. Um, it may be my project, but I, I created a folder. I followed the readmes and it's like one page. It's two pages. So I've, I don't know. I've created multiple Next.js apps over my long career. I've never experienced this. So I have a hard time now believing it's me, but maybe it's me. I don't know. Anyway, let's try Cloudflare pages. Why not? Um, while we're at it. So let's go to Cloudflare. Um, let's log. There was, wait, under attack? A video for another day. Um, log in here. You don't have any websites. Let's fix that. So we'll add a site. I don't know. Let's call it Tager Next 13. Uh, what? I don't want to do just pages. Okay. Um, create a project. And we will connect to GitHub. Tages Q. How do I filter? There's no search. Really? Do you have any idea how many repositories I have? I collect repositories. Okay. Um, where is next 13? Hmm. Good UX lesson, add a search field. Anyway, um, next, if you all see next 13 before me, I'm gonna cry. All right, time. oh, here, it was right there. Okay, begin setup now. Uh, framework preset, Next.js, let's go. No static HTML export. This is server-side rendered. Looks good, I guess. Let's save and deploy. Dun, 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 dun. And now we're going to deploy this to Cloudflare pages, and then we can actually compare. Let's try. So it's cloning the repository. Python. Okay. Um, node 12? Is there some way I can choose Node 18? Um, Anyway, this should, let's see, this should probably work. Exciting. I'm excited to compare and contrast and all the things, the different tools, um, hopefully. Okay, so we it installed Hugo. Why? Anyway, whatever. Um, it's going to, oh, 
it failed. And notice the logs aren't red or anything. It just it failed, and I have to like tunnel vision myself. But look, it says executing user command npx cloudflare next on pages experimental minify whatever. It failed because of unexpected token dot in internal modules loader. Can I debug this? Can I deploy to Vercel? No. Netlify? No. Cloudflare? Is it my repo? Whoever finds an issue in my repo that causes this, I will give you $100. I, I, I mean that. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you find something. At me on Twitter or whatever. Um, but yeah, I can't deploy this. So Next.js is just not going to be considered, unfortunately. Because even local, I can't mimic the cloud, etc. Maybe choosing Node 18 would, would help this. Um, but I don't know how to do that with Cloudflare pages. That might be a while. Can I? Yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, we're, we're dropping the Next.js test. But we can do quick and solid just to see um, some stuff. Um, let's, let's do it. Let's go to, let's go to quick here. Um, and does, is it still good? Looks good to me. Solid. Is it still good? I should see Michelle Bakel's up here. There we go. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is is just let's do some testing. Let's do some Lighthouse or something. So let's go to Lighthouse Performance. What am, what am I in? Am I in, I'm in Solid. So this is Solid. We'll only profile mobile performance. Um, I've turned off all my extensions and everything. And, and honestly, this is Lighthouse. Don't trust it. It's not like web page test where it's proper computers with setups. This is just my computer on my... There's a lot of variables here. So take this with a grain of salt and really use the tool that you feel is right for you and your team. Um, whatever, even if it's like Angular or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're here. Wow. Lighthouse 100 with solid. I love this. First content full paint. One second. Time to interactive. One second. Okay. Um, cumulatively after zero. That's awesome. Oh, reduced initial server response time. Yeah, that's, uh, that's hosted on Vercel. I, I think that's a bit out of my control. Um, okay. That's pretty nice though. Let's go do quick. Um, quick is here. Now this is local. So the server response time um, is zero. So we can't consider that, okay? Um, but let's go back and do some, some lighthouse. Um, this is a full production build though. So let's do this. Um, ah. Okay, it, it's telling me to close the solid one, but I kind of want to see the solid one um, for the numbers. Um, yeah, whatever. Let's just remember. So I will close. Oops. Close this tab. Go here. Uh, if I reload this, do I get Lighthouse? Application. Lighthouse. Okay. Not a problem. I think I know what, what, what's happening here. Um, I think it's this tab it wants me to close and all of these tabs because a service worker. Yes, perfect. So now let's do the let's do the performance thing for, for solid again, get that hundred. And we'll do we'll do it for quick soon, and then we'll have some stuff to look at and feel happy and geek out about performance and numbers. Again, this is not intended to like, you know, polarize one against the other or have you choose one. It's just we have it, so why not? You know? All right, this time a little bit slower, 99% on solid. It's all right. Um let's do the quick one. Um, is it actually quick? Um, and if you want to know why quick is quick, I, again, I made a video about this. Uh, I'll put a link up in the, up in the pop out thingamajigger. All right. Any second now, this should be completing and 100 lighthouse. All right. Let's compare numbers y'all. Um, so let's get this into view here. Let's get that into view here. And now let's just compare. I think we can even compare. Yeah, side by side like this. All right, so um, first contentful paint, quick 0.8, time to interact with 0.9. These are higher and solid. Really every number is less in quick, except cumulatively upshift, which for some reason is more in quick. I don't really know why, but there you go. Quick's faster. Um, understandably so, right? I made a video about why quick is faster than pretty much everything around. Feel free to check that out. Again, link up there. Um, but now let's look at first load JavaScript. I think that's cool because Quick has a definite advantage here. And again, I'm not trying to sell you Quick. I just really like the way it does things. Let's look at this. So first load JavaScript. Um, is, is, that, is that part of this actually? No. Let's go to the network tab in both of these. We'll filter on JavaScript loaded. Um, and then we'll look at the little number that you may not be able to see. So we'll make this window smaller. 
Okay, so we look at the number here um, of what was transferred over the network. So that's 145 bytes, okay? We'll do that with, with solid and with um, next. Uh, so, and quick, sorry. So now let's reload this and see that with solid, we've loaded 26 kilobytes of JavaScript. Uh, this is a production build. This is hosted on like Vercel and everything's minified. Um, in, in quick, let's re redo that. It's also a production build. And we've loaded zero bytes of JavaScript. I like that. As we talked about in the quick video, quick becomes interact. Quick is interactivity on demand. So when I click a button, then, um, you know, quick, loads JavaScript. And we can actually see that in action here. So if I if I click tweet, now, I don't know if you saw the network tab, quick loaded a bunch of stuff. Um, and I actually sent a request to tweet. Did it go through? Yes, it didn't because I had no text. Awesome. Great. Um, those are just some higher level trade-offs. Um, it's a shame, really, we could, it was this hard to deploy Next.js site. I really don't know why. I suspect still the problem is me um, because for something to fail across Cloudflare, Netlify, Vercel, I am the common denominator, but I don't know. I've investigated for three days. I've spoken to Lee Robinson from Russell. I've spoken to a bunch of people. I just don't know. Um, Quick also failed to deploy, but that's just because it's beta. Mitosis is beta. Give them all a checkout. I leave a link under the like button. What do you think? Was this valuable? Let me know. Leave me a comment or at me on Twitter. Uh, for now, that's been it. I'll catch you very soon in the next one. Peace.